I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to the Wednesday night class. We're still in the study of, of uh, logic. And uh, we're going to cover some more exercises in logic, and then we'll get some more lessons. Before we do, though, let's have a uh, short word of prayer. Would you bow me, please? Heavenly Father, bless our study as we engage in those things that would make us better prepared to analyze uh, not only that word, but what people say about that word. And we're grateful for lessons that point out these errors and things that uh, try to misdirect us. We pray, Father, that you be with, with us as we engage in this study, that they'll bless us in any time that we dwell upon thy word. May we learn his truth and truths and in, in, uh, incorporate it into our lives that we may be pleasing to thee. We thank thee for Jesus, for his sacrifice, and for his love for us. In his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Well, let me let me share the second screen here. I, you know what? What I'd like for you to do is uh, I've sent it to you before, but is to pull up this uh, uh, square of opposition, and then I'll uh, read. Uh, some statements and we'll place them on this uh, square of opposition and then we'll try to determine what the relationships are. I, I apologize for the, uh, you, you may not be able to see the top and bottom. I have it in yellow on my screen. It stood out very well, but on the share screen, it didn't stand out too very well. But the uh, yeah, yellow at the top says universals or at top and and the bottom says particulars are at the bottom. But anyway, so I want to read these statements to you. I've sent these statements to you in a slide, so you may look at those if you uh, wish. But first one is all cowboys are rough men. So let's place that on our square here. All, that's a universal, cowboys are, are rough men. So that'd be an A statement. And then some cowboys are not rough men. So that's an O statement. Well, you look at the red, A and O or E and I, and those are contradictories. They cannot both be true at the same time, and they cannot both be false at the same time. So that statement, um, it, it's, it's not a valid statement, but one of them is wrong. Let's take another one. Some ladies are not rude women. And then no ladies are rude women. Whether some ladies are not rude women is a no statement. And no ladies or rude women is an E statement. Well, if E is true, if it is true that no ladies are rude women, you know what we said about some in the logic is not saying anything about the rest of them. It just said some of the all are this condition. So if E is true, then O is true. If it's true that some uh, no ladies are rude women, then it's true that some ladies are not rude women. But if O is false, if it's false that some ladies are not rude women, then E also has to be false. Uh, because if, if some are not, and it's, if some is part of the all, then that means none of the women can be rude. Let's take the third one. All Christians are forgiven sinners. When we look at the square, that's an A statement. Then some Christians are forgiven sinners. 
that's an I statement. And since it's going from A to I, that's a sub implication. And if A is true, all women are forgiven sinners, then it must be true that I is also true. Now, if I is false, if there's some Christians, uh, if some Christians are forgiven sinners is false, then again, like uh, the other side, I has to be false. And if you look from, you know, the affirmatives on the left and negatives on the right, you see that the relationship is exactly the same between A and I and E and O. Take another one. No Christians are Muslims. Some Christians are not Muslims. Again, it's an E and O statement. And since it's going down, it's a sub implication. Take another one, all french fries are greasy food and no french fries are greasy food. So uh, the first one is an A statement and the second one is an E statement. Now both A and E cannot be true at the same time, but both can be false. So that's a contrary, a contrary uh, statement. <clears throat> Take another one. Some pictures are beautiful art. That's an I statement. And then some uh, pictures are not beautiful art. That's an O statement. So from I to O, that's a subcontrary. And both I and O can be true, but uh, both cannot be false. <clears throat> You have a few pictures that are beautiful, a few pictures that are ugly, and who knows about the rest of them. <clears throat> Seven, some atheists are irrational men. And then no uh, atheists are irrational men. So the some atheists are irrational men is an I statement. And the no atheists are irrational men is an E statement. It's a contradiction. Again, in contradictions, uh, A and O or E and I cannot both be true and they cannot both be false. Must be one or the other. All eighth graders are brilliant logicians, and some eighth graders are brilliant logicians. So the all eighth graders is an A statement. In some eighth graders is an I statement. And it's going down, so it's a sub implication. Let's take another one. All violinists are uh, right handed players. And then some violinists are not right handed players. So the first statement is an A statement, and the second statement is an O statement. And you see the line going from A to O, so it's a it's a contradiction. And again, contradictions uh, can't both be true or false. It must be one or the other. One has to be one, and the other has to be the opposite. So uh, some feminists are feminine, and all feminists are feminine. So some feminist or feminine is an I statement and it's going up to all women are feminine. Since it's going up, it's a super implication. And uh, the same the deal is true. They is true, then I is true, and I is false, and A is false. All Democrats are Republicans. And then some Democrats are not Republicans. So you got an A statement and an O statement. So that's a contradiction. 
then all bards are storytellers. That's an A statement. And some bards are storytellers. That's an I statement. And since it's going down, it's a sub implication. <clears throat> Let's take the another uh, or just a continuation of these exercises. And if you have it, you know, you can read along. And in this exercise, we're going to, you know, we have a set of statements, uh, three sets. And the first one we're going to assume is true. When we're not saying it is true, we're just going to assume that it's true. Then if it is true, we're going to give two more statements and we want to know the uh, uh, truth value of those two statements. That means either one, it's either true or false. So all students or young people, we're assuming that to be true. So we place that on our square of opposition, and that's an A statement. So we have uh, no students or young people. That's an E statement. Well, that's a contradiction. So both A and E cannot be true, but both can be false. Now, remember we said we're going to assume that the first statement is true is, you know, disregard the fact that it may or may not be true. We're just going to assume it's true. That being the case, E has to be false. So it has no truth value. Then we can say some students are young people. All students are young people. Some students are young people. Remember in logic, some just is referring to a portion, not saying anything about the rest of them. So since it's going down, that's a sub implication. And if uh, A is true, then I is true. So we'd have to say that some students and young people is a true statement. Let's uh, look at another one here. Uh, no angels or demons. Again, we're assuming that to be true. So then the, the uh, we want to determine the truth value of these uh, succeeding statements. Some angels are demons. So we've got no angels or demons. That's an E statement. And some angels are not demons. That's an O statement. I mean, some, excuse me, some angels are demons. That's an I statement. And you see the line going across from one corner to the other. So that's a contradiction. And uh, uh, they can't both be true. And one has to be true and one has to be false. We have said, assume the first statement is true, no angels are demons. So that means some angels are demons, has to be false. If we were to say some angels are not demons, then that's an O statement. <clears throat> and since it's going down from the E statement, that's a sub implication. And since A is assumed to be true, then we must assume that E is true also, O, o is true also. So some computers are word processors. Let's take that statement. <clears throat> now, for fact, some computer, uh, computers are not word processors. They do other things. Maybe uh, dedicated to one purpose only, and it's got nothing to do with word processing. But we're assuming this to be true. And some, uh, in fact, what I'm using right now is a, uh, a uh, laptop computer. And it can be used as a word processor. Some computers are word processors, true statement. All computers are word processors. Well, some computers are, are word processors is a uh, I statement. And all computers are word processors is going up. That's an A statement, it's going up. 
But can we determine if it's true or false? Remember in logic, when we say some uh, computers or uh, word processors, we're not saying anything about all of them, just saying part of the all are uh, computers. But when we say all computers are word processors, we're trying to determine the truth of that statement on the basis of the one that we have assumed be true, the I statement. So is it true or false? We don't know. It could be that, uh, you know, some of them are not computers. Remember, only the first statement is assumed to be true. We're not saying these uh, succeeding statements are true or not. So we don't know. We don't know anything about the rest of them. So we have to put a question mark about that as to its truth. Well, what if we say no computers are word processors? Some computers are word processors. The I statement, we assume that to be true. And no computers is an E statement. It's a contradictory to some. If there's some that are computers, then obviously you can't say that none of them are, because some of them are. So that's a false statement. So let's say some laws are not biblical laws. That's an O statement. We assume that to be true. Some laws are not biblical laws. All laws are biblical laws. That's an A statement. So the O statement we say is true. And we're try uh, trying to determine the truth value of this A statement. Well, if some of them are not uh, biblical, then it cannot be that all of them are. So that has to be a false statement. But what if we were to say no laws are biblical laws? It's the same situation that we had uh, just previously about the computers. We know some of them are not biblical, but we don't know anything about all the rest of them. They could be biblical. We just don't know. So we have to put uh, down that that is a uh, unknown. It's an unknown. Let's look at uh, this is what we just got through doing. And I, I sent that to you so you should have that somewhere. So let's do an exercise on the arguments. We did a, a session on the arguments and be sure and mark my stuff so I don't lose my place. Um, we want to underline the conclusion of these uh, uh, exercises. So and I'll read it to you. All theology is a study in, in infinity. And you can place that on the square uh, if you like. But you can do that. So all calculus problems are theology because all calculus problems are a study in infinity. You remember when we did the arguments, uh, the conclusions are uh, uh, because of, not, not because of, therefore, or something like that. So in this one, the so all calculus problems are theology is our conclusion. All theology is a study in, a, in infinity. And because all calculus problems are a study in infinity, we can say that all calculus problems are theology. Uh, number two, all space stations are important research, but some space uh, space stations are not a product of American ingenuity. So you can see the A and O statements there. 
But the conclusion is, therefore, anytime you see a therefore, it's going to be a conclusion on the basis of the two previous uh, premises. Therefore, some important research is not a product of American ingenuity. That's your conclusion. Third one, some pagans are idolaters because no pagans are Christians and no Christians are idolaters. You know, you might think that uh, uh, the because no pagans are Christians, that's that's a premise. It's not, you're not uh, uh, determining that from the uh, two statements, two uh, premises. That is one of the premises. And no Christians are idolaters, that's a premise. You could uh, you could have said uh, no pagans are Christians and no Christians are idolaters. Therefore, some pagans are idolaters. So this, some pagans are idolaters, and it might be helpful to restructure these to kind of get it in a more standard format. Next one: all objects in free fall are weightless, and all meteor meteoroids meteoroids are objects in free fall. Therefore, all meteors are weightless. So all objects are and all meteor meteors are your two premises. So therefore begins your conclusion. All, all marsupials are pouched animals, and some marsupials are not Australian mammals. Consequently, some Australian mammals are not pouched animals. So you can see that the, uh, the consequently flow from the two previous statements. So those are the premises and the consequently is your conclusion. Some Socratic sages are not herbaceous people. And some Socratic sages are metaphorical masters and some, some herbaceous people are also metaphorical masters. Well, you're drawing a conclusion from uh, what about the uh, Socratic uh, sages uh, from the fact that uh, some are metaphorical masters and, and some are uh, metaphorical masters or some pur purposecacious people are metaphorical masters. So, the sum has nothing to do with the rest of it, but the all. And the sum uh, Socratic says nothing about all Socratic sages. And some purposecacious people says nothing about all purposecacious people. So what conclusion can we draw from that? Uh, well, we can say that some Socratic sages are not purposecacious people. So that's your conclusion. Seventh, number seven, all murderers are criminals and some heroes of the faith are murderers from which it follows that some criminals are heroes of the faith. <clears throat> now you can gather <clears throat> when it says which it follows that you're drawing a conclusion from the, the first two uh, uh, statements which are premises. All are that's an A statement, and some are. That's an I statement. So it follows that some criminals are heroes of the statement. That's also an I statement. Make me true. That's a conclusion. No street legal vehicles are stock cars. Thus, no racing car is street legal. Since all stock cars are racing cars, and we probably could have uh, made this a little simpler, but just uh, saying all racing cars are stock cars, there's no race, and uh, no street legal vehicles are stock cars, and so the, therefore no uh, racing car is street legal. But our conclusion is really the uh, no racing car is street legal. That's what we're trying to conclude this. We had to have a premise that uh, <clears throat> that uh, street legal uh, vehicles are stock cars. And since our conclusion uses racing car, 
we must uh, have a premise to defining that all stock cars are racing cars. So the, no racing car is street legal. That's our conclusion. Number nine, some conclusions are not easily located statements. And you'd probably agree with that. For or because all easily located statements or sentences at the end of arguments. And some sentences at the end of arguments are not conclusions. Well, uh, all easily located uh, statements and sentences, that, that's an that's a, a statement. In some or not, that's no statement. In some conclusions are not easily located statements, that's also no statement. But that's the conclusion. We can gather that uh, some, uh, that's not saying anything about all of them, just some of them are not easily located. And, uh, but it says all easily located statements or sentences at the end of arguments. <clears throat> and it doesn't say anything about the uh, easily located sentences being at the beginning of arguments. It said all of them are at the end of arguments. So in some sentences at the end of arguments are not conclusions. Um, well, if they're not, then it's, they're not easily located. So the conclusion that we have to draw is the first part. Some conclusions are not easily located statements. And number 10, given that some pagan literature is great writing, and no great writing is worthless instructional material, we must conclude that's a dead giveaway there. We must conclude that some pagan literature is not worthless instructional material. So that's your uh, conclusion. And the first two are your premises. Let's look at the next. Let's look at the... Uh, do some syllogism exercises. And in, in a standard uh, syllogism, there's a, a major premise, a minor uh, premise, and a conclusion. There's also a major term, a minor term, and a middle term. And uh, the middle term is never in the conclusion. So let's look at these and, and try to figure out the major term, minor term, and the middle term. So all theology is a study uh, in infinity. So all calculus problems are theology. Because all uh, calculus problems are a study in infinity. Oh. <clears throat> Here we have uh, the major term is uh, uh, theology, all theology, and the minor term. Calculus problems are theology. And uh, all calculus problems would be, or study in infinity would be your uh, middle term. And your conclusion is um, all calculus problems are theology. That's your conclusion. It's because all calculus problems or studying infinity is not your conclusion. That's your minor premise. Remember, your middle term studying infinity is not in your conclusion. And since all calculus problems or theology does not include the middle term, it's got to be your conclusion. 
all space stations are important uh, research. But some space stations are not uh, a product of American ingenuity. Therefore, some important research is not a product of American ingenuity. So your major term is going to be American or a product of American ingenuity. And your minor term is going to be important research. So, and your uh, middle term is going to be space stations. And what uh, one of these statements does not include your middle term, your middle term space stations. It's not included in the, in the therefore statement. So that's your conclusion. Number three, some pagans are idolaters because no pagans are Christians and no Christians are idolaters. Well, your major term uh, is going to be uh, idolaters. Some pagans are idolaters and no Christians are idolaters. Your major term is going to be in your conclusion. Your minor term is uh, pagans. It's going to be in your uh, premises. Pagans are idolaters. No pagans are Christian. And your middle term is Christians. And uh, your uh, well, your conclusion is some pagans are idolaters. Your middle term is Christians. It is not in your conclusion. And uh, your major premise and minor premise are the because and no statements. All objects in free fall uh, are weightless. And all meteors are objects in free fall. Therefore, all meteors are weightless. So your major term here is uh, objects, you could say, uh, uh, weightless objects, but they're weightless. Weightless is your major term. And meteor is your minor term. And uh, objects in free fall is your middle term. And it is not in your conclusion. So your conclusion is all meteors are weightless. <clears throat> yeah, when you're going through this exercise, we're not saying that the conclusions are correct. We're just using that to, as an example. <clears throat> Depends how you define weightless, whether meteors are, meteors are weightless or not. They certainly have mass. Number five, all marsupials are paths to animals. And some marsupials are not Australian mammals. For example, a uh, possum is a marsupial, and it's not Australian. Some marsupials are not Australian animals. Consequently, some Australian mammals are not pouched animals. So your major term is pouched animals, and your minor term are Australian mammals, and your middle term is marsupials, and your conclusion, of course, is the consequently, because marsupials does not appear in your conclusion. And that's your middle term. So let's uh, try to write the following statements in standard order for uh, categorical syllogisms. 
some Socratic sages are not perspicacious people, since some Socratic sages are metaphorical masters, and some perspicacious people are also metaphorical masters. So put that into standard categorical form. We could say some per perspicacious people are metaphorical masters. That's your major premise. Some Socratic sages are metaphorical uh, masters. That's your minor premise. And therefore, your conclusion is some Socratic sages are not perspicacious people. And that's your conclusion. Let's take the next one. All murderers are criminals. And some heroes of the faith are murderers from which it follows that some criminals are heroes of the faith. So some heroes of the faith were uh, murderers or are murderers. Uh, then all murderers are criminals and be your minor premise. Therefore, or it follows, some criminals are heroes of the faith. That's your conclusion. No street legal big, uh, vehicles are stock cars. There's no racing car street legal since all stock cars are racing cars. We can say for your major premise, no street legal vehicles are stock cars. Then for the minor premise, we can say all stock cars are racing cars. And then we conclude, therefore, no racing cars is a street legal uh, vehicle. And your minor, your uh, uh, middle premise, middle term does not appear in the uh, uh, conclusion. Number nine, some conclusions are not easily located statements, where all easily located statements are sentences at the end of arguments. And some sentences at the end of arguments are not conclusions. So we can uh, rephrase that to say all easily located statements are sentences at the end of arguments. And uh, that would be your major premise. Some sentences at the end of uh, arguments are not conclusions. That's your minor uh, premise. So the conclusion be some conclusions are not easily located statements. Now your middle term is at the end of arguments. Uh, so and they, that does not appear in your conclusion. So that's your middle term. And the last one, given that some pagan literature is great writing and no great writing is worthless instructional material, we must conclude that some pagan literature is not worthless instructional material. So your major premise is going to be that no great writing is worthless instructional material. And your minor premise is going to be some pagan literature is great writing. Then we conclude, of course it says we conclude, we conclude, therefore, some pagan literature is not worthless instructional material. <clears throat> so what is your middle term? Great writing, that's your middle term, because it does not appear in the conclusion. Now, next week, we're going to uh, deal with uh, immediate Inferences. Remember, we had a lesson on, uh, or did we? No, we'll 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 start with immediate inferences lesson next week, and uh, may have some exercises on that also. But I've got some other uh, slides that I'll I'll be sending out, and so just to continue to read these and look again over these exercises and get it well established in your mind. Um, how to treat these statements.
And the reason for doing all this is that when you, and, and you can go to the Bible almost any um, verse and put it into a standard categorical form. And then you can put it on the square of opposition and, and whatever somebody says about it, <clears throat> you can put that in standard form and put it on the square of opposition and see whether or not it, it, it can possibly be true or not true. So thank you for your kind attention and I hope this has been useful. Although, as I say, logic is not easily uh, determined. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs>